Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. In this video, I will be discussing the interview experience of Mindtree. Now, this is interview experience four, one, two, and three are already uploaded on my channel. So, guys, make sure that you watch those videos as well so that you can get to know the level of the questions which are getting asked. Now, this interview experience took place today only, that is on 29th May 2021. So, in this video, I will be discussing only the technical round questions which are asked in this interview. Guys, if you are new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe it as well as join my Telegram group also because I am receiving so many interview experiences today that it is not possible to make video for every interview experience. So as I will be posting all the interview experience in my Telegram group. So make sure that you join that. The link of the group is given in the description box. So guys, now let's start this video and before starting the video, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel. Okay, so the date of the interview is 29th May 2021. The branch is EC. Many of you have requested me to post EC interview experience. So here I am with the video. Now the duration of the technical round was 35 minutes. Now the first question is, as you all know, it will be introduce yourself. So you have to make sure that you put all those things which you are com in comfortable with to in this inter introduce yourself. So my friend told that that he has done internships and certifications. He told that he has done certification in Java. So now he has told them that he has done certification in Java. So the rest of the interview will be continuing on this topic only related to Java as well as the pseudocodes that have to be written. So make sure that you prepare your introduce yourself very, very good so that you can excel the interview. Now the next question is how to reverse and store the elements in an array. Okay. so. So this is the pseudocode for your reference. So you can take a screenshot of it or you can write side by side. So he, if you have mentioned here that which language you prefer. So if you have mentioned C++ or Python or Java, then you have to write all the pseudocodes in that language only. So here this pseudocode is written in Java. It is the code for reversing all the elements which are stored in the array. So I hope the logic is clear to you. You can take the screenshot for this same. Now the next question is how to remove spaces in a string again. It is in this we have to write the pseudocode. So what we'll do, I will explain this logic. See, we are given an input string S and it contains white spaces. Now we have to remove all the white spaces from that particular S string. So what we'll do, we will take a new string S1 that will have empty, that will be, that will be empty initially. So now what we'll do, we will iterate over the input string that was S and for every character we will check whether it is a space or not. So if it is not a space, then we will add that particular character in the new string that is S1. And if it is a space, then we will do nothing. So after this loop is over, if we continue to follow the same logic, then the S1 string that was empty initially will contain all the characters which are present in originally in the input string without the spaces. So here is how you will remove the spaces. And in this, we have to use another S1 string. We have to use new S1 string. Okay. So I hope this logic is clear to you. Now the next question is, what is the difference between local variable and a global variable? Okay. So see local variable first. These variables can be used or exist only inside the function or the loops. These variables are not used or referred by any other function. Okay. So I hope the definition is clear to you. The variables which are defined inside a function only, these are called the local variable. These variables cannot be accessed outside that particular function or a loop. So I, I will try to make you understand by the help of an example. See, this is a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero, i less than n i plus plus. Now here in text. So this variable is defined inside this for loop. So if you try to access this x outside this for loop, it will not be accessible outside. So this is a local variable. So any variable declared inside a function or in declared inside a loop is known as a local variable. Okay. Now the global variable, these variables are the variables which can be accessed throughout the program. So no matter where you have declared them, they can be accessed in any function, in any loop or any part of the program. So the lifetime of the global variable is till the program is running. Whereas the lifetime of the local variable is, is till that particular function or a loop is running. So after this for loop is finished, the lifetime of this X will be finished. Now in global variable, it is not the case. So see, this is an example int a is equal to four B is equal to five. So these are the global variables. We have de defined a function public int add, and in that we are using these two variables. So these are two the global variables. So the lifetime of the variables last till the program lasts. So I hope this thing is clear to you. And I want to say that whenever a difference is asked or any other thing, make sure that you use an example for making interviewer understand the things because he will get to know the much better that you know, you have the knowledge. So make sure that you try to explain using an example. Okay. So next is what is the difference between equals method and double equal to in strings? 
so this is the difference which is asked particularly in java only that see this method dot equals method and double equivalent to in spring so this is in java only so the my friend was asked the difference between these two things so first difference is main difference is that dot equals method and double operate double equivalent to operator see the main difference is dot equals it is a method it is a method but double equivalent to it is an operator so this is the main difference first of all that this is a method equals is a method and double equivalent to is an operator now the second difference is we can use double equivalent to operator for reference comparison that is address comparison and dot equals method for content comparison see if we have to compare the addresses of two variables then we can use double equivalent to operator it is a reference operator but when we have to measure the content when we have to compare the content of two variables like like let's suppose s contains code and s1 contains bashers so if you have to con if we have to compare the content of these two strings then we will be using the equals method otherwise if we have to compare the address then we will be using the double equivalent to operator so this was the entire difference i hope it is clear to you now the next question so it's a one word question one word answer only for code reusability and want to use data from one class to another class which pro programming model you will ap approach okay so see it is very clear that we know that in inheritance we can use the data as well as the methods of other class inside another class so it is typically a example of inheritance so the answer was inheritance for this case okay now the next question is what is break and continue statement so you have to explain the break and continue statement okay so first of all see both break and continue statements are used inside the loops and they cannot be used anywhere else they are only used inside the loop now what does a break statement do see a break statement whenever we encounter a break statement inside a loop the loops end there only the loops end there only and the control is switched to outside the loop so this thing is very important for break statement that whenever a break statement is encountered inside a loop then the loop stops there only and the and the flow of the program is shifted to the code written after the loop so i hope break statement is clear to you now continue statement now again continue statement is can be only used in a loop only it cannot be used anywhere else so now whenever a continue statement has been encountered in a loop then it skips that particular iteration and it moves to the next iteration of the same loop so see in break we are whenever break is executed we are moving outside the loop but in continue whenever continue is whenever continue is matched then we are skipping that particular iteration in the loop and we are moving to the next iteration of the same loop the control is moving to the next iteration whereas in break the control was moving to the outside of the loop so i hope these two difference between these two is clear to you now the next question i want to store elements but i don't want any duplicate elements to store in it which java collection you will use list or set or array list so we know that in set there are all the elements present are unique so there are no duplicates present so we will be using the set for the same okay now the next question is what is constructor and its type see every language have their own constructor and its type so my friend has told on the basis of java you have to, to tell on the basis of the language you prefer so if you are telling c++ then you have to define the types which are present in c++ so in this in this question i have written the answer on the basis of java reference language so what is constructor we all know that constructor constructor is a function which initializes the object and it has the same name as the class so this is the simple definition of constructor now coming to its type so in java there are three types of constructors first is default second one is no arc constructor and third one is the parameterized constructor now what are these so first of all default constructor if you do not implement any constructor in your class java compiler inserts a default constructor into your code on your behalf so if we do not we do not write the program for constructor java compiler will insert it on its own so this is what a default constructor is now second was the no argument constructor so constructor with no arguments is known as no arc constructor so if you have defined the constructor on your own and if you have not passed any parameter in that so it will be known as a no argument constructor now the last one is the parameterized constructor so if you have defined a constructor and you have passed the parameters that is if you can say int a int b you have passed in that so that will be known as a parameterized constructor so these are the three types of constructors which are present in java in c++ there will be little different and in python again there will be little different so you can 
study on the basis of the language you prefer now question 11 that is what is the difference between throw and throws in exception handling see this entire interview is going on the java questions why because in the starting my friend told that he has done in certification in java so entire entire interview is on the basis of java only so difference between throw and throws in exception handling so throw throw is a keyword which is used to throw an exception explicitly in the program or inside a function okay so when we use a throw throw keyword we use a throw keyword inside a function or inside a loop we can say where we will throw the exception explicitly so like in this example see in this there is a function called check age and if age is le less than 18 then we have to throw the exception otherwise we will simply do other things so this is a throw this is an example of throw keyword now the next one is the throws so what is a throw throws throws is a keyword used in method signature used to declare an exception which might get thrown by the function while executing the code see throw using throw we were throwing the exception inside the function but using the throws what we'll do we'll simply we will simply use that throws keyword in with the method name that is like this you can see the example so besides the method name we have used the throws keyword and we'll use throws keyword if we if we know that this function can can throw an exception so this is the throws and throws throw and throws keys keyword so i hope the difference is clear to you now the next next question is explain the final keyword in java okay so final keyword is used to apply restrictions in class method and attribute so final keyword when used with class that class cannot be inherited final method final keyword when used with method that method can't be overridden when in inheritance take place and final keyword used with attribute that attributes value can't be changed because it has a final keyword so these are the three you can say implementation of final keyword it can be used with class method and attribute okay so the next question and the last question of this video is what is finally in exception handling so see we all know that there are blocks present in exception handling first is a try block then is the catch block and the third one is the finally block so finally block is always executed whether the exception is handled or not so it is it does not matter whether a try block has ran or a catch block has ran finally block will always run now java finally block follows try and catch block see finally block is written after try and catch block and finally block will always run whether a try block has run or a catch block has run so it will always run so this is what a finally block in an exception handling is so guys this was it for this video i hope the all the questions and answers are clear to you guys if you want more such interview experience please hit the like button for this video and please join my telegram group also because i have got lots of interview experience and i will be posting every interview experience in my group so guys thank you for watching this video